Some of you may be planning a trip to Paris, and yes, it is an enormous city. So today, we'll be sharing you some of the tips that we found useful and some things that would be useful for you to make your life a little easier on your visit to this amazing city. Paris is divided into 20 districts or areas formerly known as arrondissements, and it has a spiral-like structure from the center of Paris to the outskirts in a clockwise direction. Each arrondissement is numbered from 1 to 20 with famous attractions in each. For example, Louvre would be in the 1st arrondissement and the 18th arrondissement is home to the Montmartre. While this is a good representation of the geographical arrangement of the city of Paris, the zone system is used for transportation. The Paris metropolitan area is divided into 5 primary zones and sometimes 6 depending on the specific transportation network. Zone 1 would cover the central parts of Paris and extending outwards and these zones are primarily used for ticket pricing and passes for public transport services such as the metro, air air trains, buses and trams. With that being said, 9.4 million trips are taken across the 16 metro lines, 5 regional express networks, 8 regional train lines, 12 tram lines and 1500 bus lines. And as such, there's no doubt that people find it intimidating to get around. But fear not, because it is very simple when you get used to it. So let's start with the world famous metro system being the third largest behind London and Madrid. The metro signage is usually the letter M or in other words metro or metropolitan. The lines are numbered from 1 to 14 and there are two additional lines called 3 bis and 7 bis that were added as an extension to some existing lines. Zones 1 to 3 is home to most of the main attractions in Paris with the exceptions being the Orly Airport and the Palace of Versailles which we will make a separate video on solely dedicated to this as this is one of the places that you must visit, which are in Zone 4 and Disneyland which is in Zone 5. Anyways, most of the places that you would visit can be reached in just 4 lines, so get to know this and you'll be navigating the system like a pro. Line 1 Line 1 goes from east to west across Paris with easy access to La Défense which is a major business district with modern skyscrapers, the Louvre which is self-explanatory, and Franklin D. Roosevelt, which is the Champs-Élysées shopping district. Line 4 goes from north to south with Gare du Nord, which is a major train station that connects to international trains across Europe, Châtelet, the station for the Notre Dame but is under construction at the time of making this video, so be wary of that, and St. Mitchell, which is the closest to the Pantheon. Line 8 goes from southeast Paris to southwest Paris, with some of the stations being La Mont Piquette, Grenelle, which is close to the Eiffel Tower, Ecole Militaire, which is near Champ de Mar and the Eiffel Tower, Invalide, where Napoleon's tomb was located, and Concorde, Place de la Concorde, a Tulia Garden. And finally, Line 12, which is also another north to south line, with some popular stops being. Saint Lazare, which is a major train station and shopping district, and Assemblée Nationale, which is the French National Assembly. Almost all attractions within Paris are accessible by metro, and in fact, if you are taking the metro within the heart of Paris, you might want to consider walking instead. Sometimes it could be faster as each station is within 500 meters of each other, and you won't have to walk more than 5 minutes after you exit. With such a large network, you can almost guarantee yourself that you would have to switch lines at least once. Now, if you are traveling further out, you may want to consider the Air Air. As a refresher, the Air Air is an express train network with larger and faster trains consisting of five lines of letters A through E. It is pricier, but it may be required for you to travel from the airport, Versailles, Disney, or the suburbs. Also note that the error air, you will want to see the, these markings on the map and crossing them would require an additional fare. Please make sure you pay accordingly and you buy your tickets properly as you would not be able to tap off or exit unless the proper sum is accounted for. All this information about finding the most optimal method of transportation could be found in the Bonjour RATP app in which you can find detailed directions, stops to get on and off, signage to look out for when you're traveling, and also you can top off your Navigo Easy Pass through this application. So I guess this is a good segue into fares. Buying tickets for the Paris Metro system is easy, and there are two ways to do it. First, let's look at buying tickets in station. You can buy a single ticket, multiple tickets, or passes either from a machine or a booth with an attendant. 
though not all stations have a station attendant. You can also purchase a Navigo Easy Card, which is kind of like a credit card that you can load up with multiple rides and use throughout your trip. A single trip is called a T Plus and is currently 2 euros and these can be bought from any station and can be used in any of the following ways. A single journey on your metro to any zone you can transfer from any lines of up to 90 minutes of validation and you can also transfer to the error error for zone 1 travel. Zone 1 travel on the error error. A bus journey of up to 90 minutes from the first to last validation including bus changes and changes to the tram. And finally, a single ride on the Montmartre funicular. Now, we traveled from London to Paris getting off at Gare du Nord, and our experience with purchasing tickets was very simple and straightforward. You could find these machines with instructions clearly laid out for you to purchase tickets with select language options, and if that's of inconvenience, there are desks in which you could find what you're looking for. Our experience with both were very good and the staff is always willing to help out. During our trip, we also found that the RATP app doesn't always show some routes and as such you could use a combination of Google Maps as well as the Uber app to find the convenient route for you. With that being said, this pretty much sums up everything that you need to know in order to get around Paris. So if we miss something important, please let us know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time.